I'm sat in an Isuzu farmer's truck on a farm in Chlambeda, Wales, looking out over the sea. It's a slightly cloudy day, patches of blue, and I'm waiting for my dad to come in from doing something that looks very interesting on his farm. He calls it Bave Land. It's about 90 acres now. He's slowly been, well, when the land was cheaper, buying <laughs> little bits of uh, um, fields that are surrounding his property here. And this is where he conceptualised and came up, along with his wife Les, uh, the Bave Wolduve, which is um, their business now. But I want to talk to him today about what he does on the land here, because he seems to be always working here as well as down uh, in in the factory. So here he comes. Oh. Oh. There we are. <laughs> that looked like hard work. Well... Are we talking about the strimming I've just done? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Land well, management, I land guess. Land management. But, oh, that's a fancy word for hard work. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is uh, this is something a lot of people don't realise that you can't just leave the land to itself. Well, you can, but you'll probably end up with a jungle, and and not a very pleasant jungle round here, because it would be bracken, which forms a thatch, and then nothing else grows, or brambles which will work with the bracken and nothing else grows. And that, on top of that, we have the gorse. So we've got three really, well, sorry, there's a fourth, reeds, but they're a minor problem. The big problem around here on the hills is bracken, brambles and gorse. And when you get rid of one, the other one comes. And so it's an ongoing um, battle to keep the land clear. And really you want a biodiversity, so you want everything to get its chance to uh, see the light and that's quite an important word see the light because that's what bracken does it cuts out the light from everything else even trees have great difficulty coming through bracken so land management is working with the land uh, to improve it for biodiversity and at the same time um, giving certain areas uh, an opportunity to rewild but not entirely on their own. Um, I should say now that this, where we're sitting, this part of the farm, which is quite a substantial part, is an SSSI, um, a site of scientific interest, special scientific interest. So, 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 so. Uh, and um, that as part of this um, uh, it's a biodiversity scheme because there's a hornet robber fly on the land which um, they want to preserve. It's, it's in a, an endangered species. But to preserve that hornet robber fly, I have to actually keep the gorse and the bracken down. Otherwise, the cattle won't come on the area. And without the cattle, we haven't got the cow dung. And without the cow dung, uh, the hornet robber fly can't lay its eggs and uh, will disappear. So it's not straightforward. When we talk about land management, it's for nature's benefit as well. All of this that you're doing is effectively correcting the, could I say decimation of the uh, woodland that used to be here? Because you wouldn't have to manage it if it was natural. Yeah. Because uh, yeah, yeah. the trees would have been all over the place. <laughs> yeah, but that's everywhere. And I mean, you, you, you're going down a, a very difficult road now because you're talking about the whole of Western Europe. We've been cutting down woodland. I mean, forget about the Amazon. We've destroyed uh, the Western European um, forests, particularly in Britain. Where Britain's got less forest than, uh, um, in relation to the size of its country than places like France and Germany. Um, but this is a temperate rainforest. And if you come up in the woods with me, you'll see why. <laughs> it's very wet, uh, full of mosses and full of ferns. And, and this is the other thing. When we're talking about climate change and the planet warming up, anybody goes into a forest, even on a hot day, will realise that the, the, the trees cool the land down. And we need the trees back. As much. And we are, in, in lots of places on the farm, reintroducing and rewilding trees. Good work. There, there. And, yeah, That's I can one. see some saplings. 
and it's I think it's important not to forget the Amazon because we don't want to lose any more. No, 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 no. <laughs> Sorry, when I say forget the Amazon, only uh, the the Amazon is the only place that comes up when it talks about saving trees. Although the, there is more talk now of establishing uh, forests back in the UK, but not enough, not enough. And it takes so long. I mean, you're talking 50, 60, 70 years to establish a forest. I mean, I've been doing it here for 25 years, just um, saving certain parts. But um, I've only spoken about the the negative side of our, our uh, pest problems, which is the brambles, the bracken and, and the gorse. But there is an upside, uh, a positive side to, to this. We do leave areas of brambles because it's ideal for, for nesting birds, as is the gorse. There's also um, ground animals, aren't there? Yeah, we, we've got to remember, in fact, exactly where we're sitting at the moment, um, there's rabbits, uh, not too many, um, but we, we've got rabbits. The other thing we've got on the farm, which is really, really spectacular, well, we think so, uh, we have hares, wild hare, um, and th they've been here since we've been here anyway, and it's great to see them, because they're quite rare these days, rare hare, hare hare rare. <laughs> <laughs> right, onwards. So we're now going alongside um, an area that we fenced off um, 25 years ago to rewild. It was already a rough area with a few trees and some gorse trees. Um, there were two reasons I fenced this off. Well, three reasons. The first reason is if you didn't fence it off, the cows go in there and they just pull down young trees. They, they break young trees. Or the sheep go in there and actually eat the young, the, the smaller saplings. And so there's no way you can actually allow regrowth of trees if uh, you've got cattle and sheep still going into the area. What we're looking at is uh, trees of different age. So there are some original trees here, um, silvered birch, um, but we've pl personally planted some oaks and then there's a lot of natural regeneration of uh, trees. And then behind, what, what we're looking at is, is really an area of gorse which trees are poking through. And behind the gorse is um, about 40 acres of natural woodland. So uh, that's the, the backdrop to this wild area. So we had to fence it off and to, to protect it from sheep and cattle. But I also wanted to regenerate this area because as we go, we're going up a small hill and as we go over the brow of the hill, there's a large pond. And I wanted to protect the pond because we we're a very exposed hillside. So I wanted to get this, all these trees growing to protect the, the pond which is beyond because that's another rewilding area for a different reason. So we're now going to the top of the hill. When I say hill, we've been going, we're about 300 feet above sea level. And as we're coming through here, this is a, a large pond which used to not have a fence around it when we came because one of the problems with the farm is there's no natural streams and there was certainly there is no there's no mains water we're too high the mains water can't get here so the only water supply for cattle and sheep uh, was a small stream right down the far end of the farm uh, or in this case this has been dug out in in previous years to make it bigger and the problem with the cattle going into it uh, put it bluntly, is they drink in one end and out comes the other end. And I don't know why, but it turned it into a cesspool. And so about four years ago, we put a borehole um, in by our new property and that goes down 300 feet, um, almost to sea level. And from there we pump water and we can actually send that, we are sending that water around the farm. And so this pond wasn't needed by the cattle. So I fenced it off, not to regenerate trees, but to protect the pond 
Uh, because we get ducks. And <laughs> we literally, as you were talking, a duck just glided in. Did it? Wings yeah. out and then yeah, splatted right yeah, in the middle. So yeah. it's obviously clean enough for the ducks oh, to be happy. Well, it is now. Yeah. It wasn't. Mm. And there's reeds all around the pond, as you can see. So it's an ideal place for the ducks to nest. And we usually have uh, young ducks on there every year. So it's for a different uh, reason that we're, we're fencing this part off. So we're now we're now approaching the biggest area of rewilding that we've got. Again, we did this 25 years ago, uh, and we fenced off what was a very rough. Uh, woodland where the cows had been in and the young trees had been broken and there was a lot of bracken and a lot of um, brambles. In fact in the first few years I used to cut the bracken in the forest just to give the trees and other plants a chance to come back. Um, but this particular area we've got is about five acres of wood of our own woodland but it backs straight on to another 50 odd acres of a neighbour's woodland that that runs across the hillside. So we've got nearly 60 acres, shall we say, and on the land we've got uh, an area of further down. We've created a, a wildlife corridor connecting this 50, 60 acres with a, an area of woodland that's owned by the National Park. That's below our farm. And so we've got here something in the region of perhaps 100 acres of wild land uh, available for foxes, badgers, stoats, weasels, and probably um, because there's a lot of uh, hazel in there, we think there's a lot of dormice uh, probably in there. So it, it's, a, it's a very diverse habitat, but if we go in, we can see what a temperate rainforest looks like. Is there much temperate rainforest in the UK? Uh, no, that's the problem. What I'm looking at now is something Tolkien-esque. Yeah. There is a the intertwining moss-covered variety here, from your silver birches to your what look like really old oaks, oaks yeah. um, winding limbs, as well as a lot of straight up, much younger stuff. The the amount of moss, particularly on the trees, indicates that we've got really clean uh, air. What we've got on the on the forest floor is a lot of honeysuckle, thick with honeysuckle through here. And then, of course, that grows up the trees. A lot of ivy uh, also. Um, so we're going to go over this stile, which uh, I put in many, many years ago, and it's still here, much to my amazement, it hasn't rotted. It's got a little dog door as well. Oh, yes, absolutely. So this is a public footpath? Um, no, this is really put in for our benefit. An enjoyment. Yeah, to walk round the woods, basically. Uh, it's a very rocky area, and uh, that's why there were trees here before we, before we put the fence around. Um, the trees have managed to grow in this area because the cows don't like going in amongst the boulders. So that gave the uh, trees some protection. So this wall is fascinating in itself but not only because it's part covered in moss but so it could be 500 years old easily easily and uh, it's still woodland on the other side and that's what i was trying to explain uh, it's not just our small five acre wood there's very very extensive woodland uh, for a, a good 50 acres let me just pull back a moment because you just that throwaway comment of Somebody built this in front of us <laughs> yeah. half a millennia ago and it's still standing. Oh yeah, well that's the thing about uh, these dry stone walls, you know, there's no cement in them. Um, they do fall down in places, but by and large, um, they, they look after themselves and um, just go on forever. And I, we, we love to, we have rebuilt many of the uh, stone walls around the fields because they were damaged by stock and so on. This, this one we're looking at, uh, there's not been very, very much stock in here, so it, it doesn't get damaged in any way. But on the rest of the farm, we've spent 10 years rebuilding all the old um, stone walls around the small fields we've got. 
because the average field on this farm is about an acre, uh, which is the area that you could plough in a day with a horse. Do stone, dry stone walls act in any way similar to a, to a hedgerow when it comes to wildlife? E even more so. Well, because um, th they are literally dry inside, so they make fantastic habitat. We find always the, funny, the funniest thing we find when we take one down is toads. There's always toads in them. And, uh, but apart from that, in fact, when we rebuild them, we leave little cavities so that uh, small animals, rabbits, whatever, can uh, use utilise the wall. Then, of course, you've got uh, wood lice and, and stuff like that. Beetles, mice, lots of mice. And it is really dry in there, so it's better than a hedge because it's, it's nice and dry and warm. Good place to, to hibernate, squirrels to hibernate, things like that. Yeah, excellent habitat. What about the summer? We don't, we, we're not in lizard country, are we, in the oh, summer? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, we've got loads of lizards around here. Slow worms, m masses. When I say masses, there's slow worms everywhere. You'd be um, give people nightmares if they say there's masses of them. They yeah, can be I'm freaky sorry about that, because yeah, they do look like snakes, uh, but they're not. Uh, but if you... You, you go and lift a, an odd stone somewhere, the chances of, a, of a, if there's space underneath it, there'll be a slow worm there. They, they hibernate, hibernate in, the, in the winter and they literally go into the soil. They'll go into the soil below stones and dig their way in. I've seen snakes here before. Oh yeah. Um, I'm glad to say we don't see many snakes, but there must be. Uh, well, well, we've had grass snakes nesting in our compost but um, I'm quite happy not to see any adders. You were a bit Harrison Ford in that regard, aren't you? Yes, absolutely. You really do not like really? snakes. <laughs> I, I won't run away from them, but I just don't like them, you know, um, as, as many people don't. But the slow worms, um, because they're, a, in case you don't know, a slow worm is actually a lizard without legs. Um, but we have lizards in the, wall, in the walls, not, not here in the forest. The lizards will be out in the open, because we've got hillsides facing the sun, so it's an ideal place for lizards to warm up. I can't help but look at the footpaths, which sometimes are animal-made and sometimes are human-made, and wonder who may have passed here yeah. over over a thousand years. I mean, how, yeah. how long have people lived in the area here? Ten? Oh, yeah, since the Ice Age. Seven thousand years? Well, the Ice Age was 10,000 years ago, but people didn't come back straight away. Um, but uh, interestingly, on the top of the hill, the way we're heading at the moment, um, there are the remains of um, Iron Age uh, hut circles. Mm. And uh, the, the, the old people used to call them the Irish houses. Um, and they look out towards the Irish Sea. So they would have been the, er the earliest settlers came from the Mediterranean or across from Ireland. Um, and settled all along the western coast. But here we've got standing stones, uh, by that I mean <laughs> prehistoric standing stones put up by humans, not, uh, not natural ones. Mm. But we get natural standing stones as well. Your um, management, which there's a better word for that, it's um, your custodian. Yes, we don't own the land, yeah. we're just here. Um, it's our job to look after this as best we can for future generations. And yet when you talk about, you know, we did that 25 years ago, we did that 15 years ago, it's, it's, it feels a little bit like a blink, in the, a, a blink of the eye compared to how much is going on here. Yeah, but uh, if we hadn't taken those steps to protect certain areas, uh, th this would never happen. So we... we and we've learnt an awful lot. I mean, I've never been in one place so long. Um, I've had land before, but never as long as this. And you, uh, it enables you to see uh, how long it takes for things to change. It takes, but it gives you a chance to see what you can achieve. Over uh, uh, that's a problem with nature. It takes time, a long time. I think we'll leave it there. <laughs> <laughs> thanks very much keep up the great work I can't wait to see it in another 25 years yeah well I probably won't be taking you around <laughs> you'll have to find somebody else I'm going to listen back to this audio
and retrace our steps. How creepy is that? Very creepy. <laughs> <laughs>